Hello there. Welcome to Healthy Cooking with your friendly Italians. I'm Jim Biro. And I'm Marilyn Biro. And Marilyn, today we're going to talk turkey. We sure are. Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving's is coming right, right upon us. The holidays we, are here. That's right. And we've got an easy, quick way of roasting a turkey. And it's got all kinds of attributes to it. And we're going to have a little demonstration on that. We're going to give a cup. Everybody's got their own recipes for uh, Thanksgiving dinner. We're going to throw a couple more in. We'll give you a few more hints. We got some crazy ideas that I, I I think when I had a nightmare the other night, came up with what to do with leftovers. I've got that. And uh, we got some other things we're going to be talking about. So uh, sit back, enjoy, and let us show you a demo on a How to way cook a turkey. To kick, cook a turkey. This takes less time, and it's supposed to be more moist. Actually, it is because Jim tried it a, a week or so ago. It's got nice crispy skin a, to a it. Nice crispy skin, and it is the breast does come out moist, and that's usually the problem that it's dry. So, here's the demo. And uh, it. it, it, it and you can get this. You can make your gravy ahead of heavy time, and we'll show you why you can do that. Uh, when uh, so that we got all these good things to happen, and it's going to take probably three hours to cook it. Yeah, it would be a lot less. Yes. All right now, mind you, you're going to put it in the refrigerator for 48 hours. Yes, you do have to. Right. You have to okay. prep it before. We ready? Okay. All right. Here is the turkey, and what I'm doing first is I'm going to cut off the thigh and the legs on each side. And if you get down the bone and then just pull it back, it's really very, very easy to to uh, to get uh, that thigh and uh, leg out in one fell sweep. Swoop. Swoop? Swoop is the correct word, okay. yeah. So we'll do the one side, and then uh, we'll, uh, we'll do the, the other side. And I'm going to put them in a pan uh, on a uh, on a uh, roasting rack. Roasting rack, and you'll see why I, I want to do it that way, because this is uh, this roasting rack is going to go into the oven for up to 48 hours. You mean into the refrigerator for 48 hours, right? Yeah, Marilyn, you're right. <laughs> I I don't think you want it in the oven for 48 hours. Oh God. <laughs> That's what Sorry happens. about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting, you know, hell to get old. <laughs> hell to get old. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to turn the turkey on its back, on its breast, and I'm just breaking that back rib piece right on off. That's what we're going to be using for the uh, the gravies. Then I've got some... Uh, uh, shears, some poultry shears, are, yeah. cut on both sides of uh, the backbone, and that's going to uh, release uh, the backbone, the turkey neck, and those are going to go into uh, into making up a gravy that we can do two or three days ahead of time because uh, now uh, this is going to go into into the refrigerator, not the oven, for mm -hmm. 48 hours. So now we're going to turn it back over on its uh, on its on its back that is gone, uh, and sort of push it down to break that bone up on top, and put your fingers underneath the uh, the skin you're and your, uh, yeah, you're putting the salt. Is that all you're using is salt just, under the skin? That's it, just salt. So that keeps. I, I find that if you use other herbs, if that's it, really doesn't take the flavor. Okay. It doesn't. It's no. better putting them in the pan or and I'm something. Gonna, and I'm going to do the same thing under the skin uh, with some salt. And you can also rub the uh, the underside of the breast, rub the inside uh, with some salt. And uh, that's all there is to it. And it'll go into uh, into the refrigerator. And uh, 48 hours later, we uh, will start cooking it, okay? And with those wonderful bones, we're going to make uh, turkey gravy two days ahead of time. Make it two days ahead of time. So I just stick it in there for now. And, but, you, uh, but you make a stock. We have the recipe for mm -hmm. um, the gravy. Yeah. The, the stock is, 
you uh, you're gonna take and we, it's listed uh, in here that we're gonna take. You can either put it in a Dutch oven or you can put it in a roasting pan. If you put it in a roasting pan, you're talking about 450 degrees. You put it in a Dutch oven, a, you know, in a medium high temperature. Put some canola oil in there. Put your necks and your backbone and uh, brown them all over. You can brown them in a Dutch oven or in the uh, in in the oven. Uh, put in there some butter, some onion that is thinly sliced, some celery, uh, and then uh, let that brown. When it gets brown, add some flour, cook it for a minute, add some white wine. That's going to give a nice flavor. Let that cook. Let that cook down a bit. Add four cups of chicken broth, either your home, own chicken broth or, or a store-bought chicken broth, three cups of water, three bay leaves, and all of the browning bones and the season and season with salt and pepper. Cover and cook over a medium uh, heat for one hour. Take it off, let it cool, uh, degrease it, uh, and strain it. And, and there's your gravy. And there's your gravy. Now going back, now you've got the turkey in the oven or in the refrigerator. Here I go with the oven th refrigerator for 48 getting hours. As bad as me, right? You're old, you know, you're getting old too. You're I know that. <laughs> <But All right. laughs> so go back and what you do now. You're taking it out of the oven the day of of Thanksgiving. Now what do you do? All right, we're going to take and we're going to take first. We're just going to put the legs and thighs in the oven at a very low temperature. Uh, at about uh, 250 degrees for one hour. You're not going to put the breast in yet, okay? Now you turn the legs over, put the breast, uh, put the breast in breast side down, cook for another hour, okay? Now take it, take them, uh, take it, uh, your breast, turn them over, turn the breast over to the breast side up, cook it another hour, okay? So when you've finally done that, uh, now let's say you've now done it and it's now a uh, couple hours before you're ready to, to, uh, to have Thanksgiving dinner, right? You got all, all the meat uh, uh, cooked. What you've done is you created the dark meat is going gonna, is gonna to be cookie, is going to be right temperature, it's going to be done, it's not going to be red in the middle, and your breast is going to be nice and moist. So you're going to have both of those things going for you that is done, all right? So now it's time to, to, to bring the bird uh, onto the table. So to stick the whole thing back into the oven at 500 degrees for about 15 minutes. And what's that's going to do, it's going to crisp up all, that, all the skim. It's going to heat, heat that all the way through. Uh, you should have a meat thermometer to make sure that uh, the uh, the temperature of the of the meat uh, is is right. Uh, we've got it listed here. You can check it out at what temperature the breast should be at and what temperature the thighs the, yeah. uh, and and legs should be at. So now it's time to serve, and it's so easy. You're going to take and and cut the uh, the thigh away from the uh, the leg. Serve the the legs whole. A lot of people like to grab a hold of those legs. And they're right? very good that way right. with the crisp skin. Yeah, and then the thighs, you can slice very easily. Put that on your platter. Take your, uh, your, your breast and go along the bone uh, uh, from the breastplate on down and the whole uh, breast will come out in one piece. And then you can slice and it. And then slice that and put it on. And the nice part about this is that the biggest thing is if you carve it at the table or do the proverbial, you end up having cold meat, okay? <laughs> Basically, it becomes room temperature. This at least is served with some warmth, and your gravy will be nice and hot. And I also read or heard someplace where another uh, direction was that was a little bit simpler was that if you start your turkey uh, upside down and then turn it, that you're better off because then your, your breast would be more moist. I think this one is more thorough about making sure that your meat is what, how you want it. But that's another suggestion. And the other thing is if you have the meat standing at room temperature a little longer than you anticipated, have a little chicken stock on the stove, heat some of that up, and just drizzle 
some of that over your breast and over all your meats, and that'll uh, that'll warm, warm it up. It, warm it up. So, so now we've got the turkey done. We've got the gravy done. So uh, let's talk a little bit, Marilyn, about the different kinds of turkeys that are on the market. There's these all days. kinds of turkeys, and you can spend anything from. 50 cents a pound to how much for the really good ones? Five dollars a pound. Five dollars a pound. So here. The, the top of the line is what they call a heritage turkey. And it's a different type of breed. It is leaner. It's it's tastier. Right. It has less breast meat, bigger legs. Uh, they are, uh, they're uh, they live outdoors. Uh, right, so a, they're, they're a range turkeys I mean they're not they're not cooped they're right not, uh, and they uh, they they grow f slowly there's no they don't give them any hormones or anything to grow quickly and uh, they uh, they're absolutely wonderful but if you, uh, they're they're very expensive I doubt at this point you would find one a couple of days before Thanksgiving I think you would have to order those ahead of time right. from a very special butcher and then you have uh, organic, which, which is wonderful. Which uh, is again, they don't like, they, they don't, don't have the growth ho hormones, in, hormones them, yes. in them. They are less expensive than a, a heritage. Uh, they have all the good qualities. Probably don't have quite the same taste, but are as a great uh, are great turkeys. Then we can go to fresh turkeys, which I prefer. And uh, and if if you haven't bought your turkey as of right now. Uh, you need a fresh turkey because you don't going to have enough time to uh, thaw out a frozen, a frozen turkey. Uh, and if you do, if you bought a frozen turkey, make sure if you buy a fresh turkey, make sure that it does not have on it sal saline solution. Saline. Saline. saline because what it is, it's it's salted salt water. water, and what you're paying for is is salted water. You don't need it. It shouldn't be there. Put the big X on it. Don't even use it. Okay, so now. But the other thing, if you buy a frozen turkey, buy it five days ahead of time, uh, and you haven't got enough room in the refrigerator, you got everything else in the refrigerator. Uh, take and uh, get an ice box. Uh, put it in there. Well, your cooler. your cooler. Your picnic cooler. You can put your turkey in and let it defrost that way. Um, there are other ways to defrost it quickly, but it, it really is a problem. The the cheaper cheaper ones are the frozen ones and usually most grocery stores if you spend X amount of dollars you can get a uh, 50 or 59 cents a pound or some some cheaper way of buying your turkey but as we said it's a little late now to try to defrost a turkey because yep. if you put it in the refrigerator and let it thaw it takes four to five days uh, Marilyn and I brought a turkey over to the New York deli every right. year uh, they uh, feed the people that don't have any place to go, and they right. feed them free. And they do a beautiful job. And they job. do a great job. So a lot of people contribute uh, the, a turkey to them, and, uh, and I think they serve three or 400 people. I think they do, God too. bless them. They, they do do one, one great job. Uh, Marilyn, let's come up with a, a, a recipe for them. All right. We, uh, we have some sides here that we have the recipes on at the bottom of our show. And uh, the first one he's going to do is a sweet potato corn fritter, which sounds very interesting. The nice thing about a sweet potato corn fritter, you make up the batter, uh, you, you put them on the griddle. You can do this ahead of time before you, uh, you've got all your other cooking done. Uh, and then uh, cover them, and when you're ready to serve them, just mic them and bring them on out, and they're done. So you're going to have little patties that you've put on top of the top of your stove that you're going to uh, uh, going to make and uh, it's a combination of uh, putting in a mixing bowl some flour and cornmeal and baking powder and sweet potato cooked sweet potato and uh, apple spice and stir that around add some buttermilk and eggs everything in this thing is good right uh, and then fold that into your flour mixture and uh, add some corn to it, some frozen corn, uh, and make them into little patties and saute them. And when you, when you serve them, you drizzle a little maple syrup over the top. It would be delicious. And if you have 
a nonstick griddle, uh, grill pan or griddle pan, uh, you don't have to use much fat to to uh, make the uh, the fritters. Right. So and they're very very good. And another recipe you have is that I, our new favorite um, squash is the new delicata squash. We're finding that much I like it better than the butternut or the traditional. Um, squashes so he has a sauteed delicata squash rings yeah and a delicata squash is a, a lo, lo, small Long. little uh, oblong type of, of squash that's got colorings of yellows and greens in it the nice part about it not only is it it got a magnificent sweet uh, yes it does taste to it you don't have to cut the skin off. You just make it into slices. Right. Get, get rid of the seeds out of and the center of it. And it doesn't have to cook quite as long as a butternut or an acorn or no. any of those other ones. And in this recipe, what we're going to do is we're just going to take it and uh, saute it uh, on top of the stove with some olive oil and some garlic. Got to have garlic in it, of right? Of course. And uh, some parsley and some lemon zest uh, and salt and pepper and saute it, and it's going to caramelize on you, on you a little bit, and you're done. Really a very, very simple, simple dish dish to make. So you might uh, you might want to try, try those. Uh, Marilyn, I want to talk about roasting pans. Yes, roasting pans are very important. If you noticed that J when Jim did the demonstration that he had a rack that fit that pan perfectly well. I think that's one of the key uh, important parts of a roasting pan. You don't you don't want a rack that slides all over because when you take it out of the oven, if it's sliding, you could lose your turkey or you lose whatever you're going to have have in there. You want large handles on 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 it. I prefer to have it coated with a Teflon coating. It, that's nice. Uh, that that's nice. Uh, and the top rated uh, pans of baking pans uh, is the Caflon pan. Those are, and those are available for you at the outlet mall. They have some good deals on them. Well, they yeah. have an out, you know, a Caflon outlet at the outlet mall. And yeah. amazingly, at certain times of the year or certain sales, the bargains that you can get on this wonderful cookware. Yeah, uh, you, oh, the Chef outlet, 50% uh, off right off the top uh, on these right. pieces, and they're and they're good, and uh, you can, uh, I mean, you can spend three, four hundred dollars. Oh yes, on, on there one. are all kinds of you don't need to do that. cans out there. So you might want to you might want to consider that maybe you, if you haven't bought have one already, now's a good time to go get it. Right. Okay. Um, I, I had bad dreams the other night. What do you have? I I trying to figure out what to do with leftovers. Well, you know, it was interesting. Uh, the, once in a while, Jim and I watched the program called The Chew with Mario Batali and a few other wonderful chefs. And they have spent the whole month of November talking about Thanksgiving, how to make things, and about how to use leftovers. And they sort of challenge one another on how to do this. And so it's very interesting. So Jim has looked at some of those shows, come up with some ideas about what you can do with leftovers, right? All right. Now, being Italian, anything that you have leftovers, you make into a frittata. Well, that's the Italian way of dealing with leftovers, yes. So now we got, we've got all the, the, the dressing, all right? So why don't we take that? Let's add some eggs to it. Okay, beat that all up, put it in a pan, put it in the oven, and it'll come out like a big pizza, right? Now take some of that gravy that you have and Left heat that gravy. up. gravy, there you are. Pour that over the top. You want a little color? You got cranberry, you got cranberry left over? Sprinkle that with a little cranberry and you eat it like you would a pie, all right? You got the, the the bread stuffing with all the wonderful vegetables. Whatever, in there, however you, know. you make your yeah, bread well, stuffing. And you have the gravy on top. Uh, you could even, I guess, put some turkey in it too if you wanted. But that's probably all gone by then, anyways. Uh, so that's one way to do it. Another way. Now this is really weird. You're going to take your 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 turkey dressing, mm, uh, and uh, you're going to add uh, add some eggs to it. And Again. you're gonna crumble. You're gonna crumble that turkey up or that dressing up so it's uh, it's pretty loosened up from everything. 
uh, and you're going to add your eggs to it. You're going to add a little uh, nutmeg to it. You're going to add a little cheese to it, okay? And it's, you want it fairly loose. So now take some chicken stock, put your leftover vegetables, your peas, your corn, your uh, green beans, put that in there. Bring it, bring it, what, got any turkey? Put some turkey in it. So now take this, this glob that you have, put it on a wet cutting board, okay? And take your knife and just sliver a little off into the pot with the uh, with the stock uh, cooking. And it has to be uh, boiling or, or almost boiling. Yep. It has to be very, very hot to, to make these into dumplings, yes. And you're going to have dumplings. So you're going to have a sort of turkey soup, chicken soup with dumplings. And uh, I don't know how I ever came up with that one. I don't know either, but I'm sure. <laughs> so the thing is, use your imagination. You have these wonderful leftovers. We all. My favorite as a child was, I, I think I looked more forward to the turkey sandwich with gravy. You know, we would toast the bread, and you'd put your turkey on it, and you'd put hot gravy over it, and I thought that was absolutely wonderful. So there's hot turkey sandwiches. You can go all different ways from she, something as simple as that. She says sandwich. It isn't sandwich. It's it is sandwich. S-A-N-G-W-I-T. That's only if you're from the Buffalo area, but that's okay. It ma, is sandwich. Ma. So anyway, and then I also today they were mentioning the difference between, you know, cranberry sauce and cam cranberry relish. I think cranberry relish is much more much better and it has a lot less calories uh, you know they're saying that an actual traditional um, Thanksgiving meal consists of about 4,300 calories if you ate all of it mm -hmm. so you have to figure out ways and how you can make it absolutely delicious and there are so many ways including mashed potatoes with cauliflower in them whatever just think about it um, do your own thing. Don't laugh at that mashed potatoes with cauliflower. It really it works, is good. Right? It really is, and you wouldn't know it. Right. But it does cut down on the calories. Or the other thing you could do is forget about it all. Don't do anything. <laughs> Go to the ghoul and have a wonderful we Thanksgiving can do that buffet. Too. Go out and it's do a that. Magnificent. They got all kinds of stations there. It's going to be great. So you can do that too. So uh, I'm sure you're going to have a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving. And we wish you all a very happy, happy Thanksgiving. Yep. And our next, uh, I'm really, we're really excited we're about. We're really our, excited about the next show in two weeks. We're going to uh, have some uh, some people in. We have some guests. Yes. And our guests are. They are Amwe Law. Law, that is from It's a Wonderful Life Museum, and Kyle Lottie, who is with the Seneca Community Players. Seneca Community Players will be doing their uh, proverbial um, radio show. My husband's playing. Starring Jim Barrow. That da, nasty da, 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 da. banker, Mr. Potter. Can and you then imagine I, me, a nasty <laughs> banker? <laughs> he also is the bridge keeper, and uh, you're, you're a bartender, the Italian bartender, too. But yeah. he has all those parts. But it's always such a fun thing and wonderful tradition. They'll be having three shows, so we'll be talking more about... And they're going. The community players are going to do some unusual race on on Sunday. So we'll let Kyle tell you about that, which is about playing parts. And, and you know, so there's all sorts of exciting. Zuzu's things. coming to town. And of course, the real biggie is the 5K race, which brings in a huge amount of people into the community. It's a happening. So uh, we hope you'll uh, participate in. Yeah, all the shops will be open. You can buy things. A lot of There's people. There's a chili in town. kickoff. You can go uh, check on chili. Yeah. Uh, all kinds of wonderful things happen. You really, yeah, well, there'll be chili uh, available on the street. So we got all kinds of wonderful things. It'll get you into that Christmas mood, ready for Christmas. So that's the start of it. Then after that, we're going to do Italian Christmas Eve fishes. Traditions. Traditions. We're going to talk about right. the traditions. So we're we're hepped up for the holidays. We want you to get hepped up for the holidays. Enjoy. Get into that Christmas spirit and have a very merry, merry Christmas and a happy New Year and a happy Thanksgiving. So enjoy. Goodbye. Ciao. Ciao.